Okay, here is our stage 18 review. First thing that you need to be aware of are the declensions and their endings. This is huge, especially for recent vocab. As you go back and you look at the vocab, you're going to have words like these. Caput, capitas, neuter head, signum, signi, neuter sign, manus, manus, masculine hand, uh, nox, noctus, feminine night, pars, parts, is feminine part. You need to be able to go back and look at your vocab and see that is is the genitive singular of caput. That makes it third. Signi, the letter I, is the genitive singular of signum, so that's second. The U-S is the genitive singular of manus manus, so that's fourth. Nox noctis is third. Pars partis is third. You have to be able to go through and make sure that you know, especially that recent vocab, what uh, declension they belong to. Uh, here's an example where I have a third, a first, a third, a fourth, and a fifth. The E-I makes it fifth. Um, this is the chart that I gave you guys during class. Uh, this is all of the ing, uh, all of the endings, the singular and the plural, for the first five de, for the five declensions. Um, you can see that I circle the genitive singular because that dictates whether or not it is first, second, third, fourth, or fifth declension. A E is first, I is second, I S is third, U S is fourth, and E I is fifth. Again, knowing these endings and knowing um, the declension that the words belong to is fairly important. Uh, next, we have nay, num, no nay for questions. Those have been on the previous test. Nay, yes or no. We don't know which one. Num expects a no answer. No nay expects a yes. Uh, shouldn't be new for us. We've had those over the last several tests. Conjugations of verbs. If you're going to have to look at a verb, look at the infinitive and tell whether or not it is first, second, uh, third, or fourth conjugation. This will be very similar to what you did on your quiz. This one right here. You have a mare. That is the um, first conjugation. You have dokeira because of the macron over the E is second. You have winire, that's fourth because it's I-R-E. Cognoscara is third because it is E-R-E and it does not have a macron. You're going to have to look at those and be able to tell based off of the uh, infinitive what declension, or I'm sorry, what conjugation the verb belongs to. Uh, relative pronoun chart. Uh, I would encourage you to go back and at least look at the uh, nominative and accusative forms of qui, quai, and quote. There are going to be a few questions that ask you what the case, the number, and the gender of those relatives are. Here's the, here's the, the nominative and accusative, the singular and plural for all of the genders. Um, if On the test, if you get the word close, it's going to ask you what is the case, the number, and the gender. Um, you would have to tell me that it was close is accusative, it is plural, and it is masculine. It is accusative, it is plural, and it is masculine. Quam, if I gave you quam, you would tell me that it is accusative, it is singular, and it is feminine. Uh, neuter rule makes the quote and quiet fairly easy. Uh, next we have the uses of quam. Again, those were on your quiz. There are four ways to use quam, how, in exclamatory sentence, that's the exclamation point. You can use this whom or which in a relative clause. You can use it as than if you're using it with a comparison, or as blank as possible with a superlative verb. For quo, there are two ways to use it. I can use it as because, as a conjunction. I can use it as which in a relative clause. If I use it as a relative, I have to have a neuter noun for it to relate back to. Uh, here are the answers for your quiz. Um, I gave you A, B, C, D, and E. A was than, that's a comparison. B is how, that's exclamatory, you need an exclamation point. Uh, C is a relative, whom. Uh, D, because, is a conjunction. And E is a relative, which. Uh, on number one, quote does not have a neuter noun in front of it, so it has to be D, a conjunction, because. And number two, qualm is being used here. Um, there is no comparison, there is no uh, as blank as possible because there's no uh, adverb. The only thing I have here is well on, which is a neuter noun, or I'm sorry, a feminine noun for it to relate back to. It's a relative. Because it's in the accusative form, we use whom. Um, number three, we have quam. Before quam, we have missiori. That is a comparison. Because it is a comparison, I'm going to choose a, than. 
Uh, number four, I have an exclamation point being used with qualm. That's an exclamatory. So B, how. Um, the last one, I have quote. If I look back, autofikim is a neuter noun. I'm probably using a relative, which. Now, there's only a, uh, one or two questions about formation of irregular adjectives, so I put this chart on here. Um, like I said, there's not very many of them on there. I think there's only one or two. Uh, positive form are bonus, malus, magnus, and multus. Uh, the comparative form are melior, peor, maior, plus. Superlative form, optimus, pessimus, maxim, maximus. There we go. I had too many mooses in there. Uh, and then the plurimus is the superlative form. They're going to give you one of these and ask you if it's positive, comparative, or superlative. So if, if the word they give you is bonus, you would say, hey, that's positive. If they gave you maior, uh, you would tell me that was a comparative. If they gave you maximus, you would tell me that that is a superlative. Of course, you're going to have that English vocab that's associated with some of the vocab that you've had in Latin. You have audacious. That has to do with audio, which is daring. Uh, you have decapitation. To caput is a head. To decaput is to take the head away. So decapitation is chopping off of the head. Reconnaissance, uh, that's whenever I'm uh, looking for facts. Um, petitions, uh, that is from peto, which is to seek out, and, and that would be request. Fragile. Uh, from fragile, and that is like breakable, fragile. Uh, demonstrative uh, is the ability to demonstrate one's feelings. So demonstrative is someone who's affectionate, who's able to tell you how they feel, nocturnal. Uh, from nox noctis, that's something that uh, loves nighttime. Uh, manacles, that's where you put your manus, which is your hands, so that'd be like handcuffs. Partial from pars partis, so that is part. Uh, and then profane. This is actually an interesting one because profane, pro, meaning in front of, things that were profane didn't happen inside of a temple. They happened in front of the temple. You didn't want it to go or anything bad to happen inside the temple. That was sacred. So pro is in front of and uh, in front of the temple. Um, you're also going to have characters and character matching. You have to know who Clemens was with respect to, um, with respect to the stories. Um, so, Uticus. Clemens was a good guy, right? He owned the shop. Uticus is the bad guy. He's the one who's saying, you owe me money. Phalus is the cat. The cat's pretty cool at the end. If you haven't read that, that's a pretty good story. Um, Isis is the goddess. Uh, Taberni are the other shopkeepers. Uh, Barbillus is the guy who sold them the shop, but Pariah are the thugs. Quintus is the guy who bought Clemens the shop. Cynix is the old man that owned it before uh, Clemens did. Surwe, uh, Gipti are the guys that were in front of uh, Uticus's shop whenever Clemens went to address him. Now I put a large list of Latin vocab on this section because I want you to look at these words and be able to uh, tell me A, what they mean, B, what declension they belong to. Um, you're going to have some, some words on here that you're going to have to mix, mix and match like you normally do with antonyms or synonyms, but you're also going to have these words and, and they're going to ask you about what conjugation they belong to, what declension they belong to, uh, and some of them are from the, the, uh, the translation themselves. So look through these. I'm not going to go over these for you. Look through these uh, and make sure that you know what declension they are, make sure that you know um, what conjugation they are, what they mean obviously, uh, and how to use them. Next, we have dative used with a special verb construction. We use the dative with a couple of verbs and a couple of verb construct. Uh, here are those constructions that I'm talking about. Remember, when we get that adverb like facile or difficile or whatever I get, plus s, facile est, I'm going to use the dative clementi uh, to be the subject of winkera, which is the infinitive. So I get a facile est or difficile est. I expect two things, a dative and then an infinitive. So translation here, it is easy for Clemens uh, to win. Uh, the second one is words like apropinquat. We use the dative to approach. So taberni is in the dative because Clemen approaches the shop. We also have other words like fawit. We have other words, other verbs that use the dative. So kind of keep those in mind. Uh, the next is a list of things, predicate nominative use, using the dative ablative or accusative as objects, especially objects of the preposition, using the nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, and ablative in context. Um, in cases used with prepositions. This is going to show up on the test in a fill-in-the-blank style. So I'm going to give you a couple of these um, to, to look at so that you kind of understand what you're going to be asked to do with it. 
uh, this is the structure that you're going to see. Um, you're going to get a, a, an English translation of a sentence that's in Latin, and you're going to have a blank. So in number one, uh, we have in we a blank rot in Gens Turba, and then the translation on the street uh, of glassmakers, there was a huge crowd. Uh, number two, we have Tum Uticus, blank signum dated. And then I have the English translation, then Uticus gave a sign to his studs. And then number three, I have Libertus non erat, blank said fortis. Uh, and then I have the freedman was not weak but strong. Um, hit pause, try to answer those, and then I'll explain why each answer is, is correct. Here are the answers uh, to these fill in the blanks. I'll tell you why each one. Um, on the street of glassmakers, that's what I'm trying to fill in the blank with is of glassmakers. Because of that, of, I know it's genitive, so I just have to decide whether it's B or C. Uh, it's also plural glassmakers. I have to decide whether it's B or C based off of is the word third or second uh, declension. Because it is a second declension, that orum tells me that that's the genitive plural, and that's why I use it for of glassmakers. Uh, for two, I have B. I'm trying to re replace the blank with to his thugs. Um, in this case, to his thugs, two or four is the dative translation. Um, so all I have to do now is decide whether A, B, or C is dative. A is accusative. C is um, accusative looking, although it's not. Um, operus is the dative ending, so I would choose B. Uh, for number three, this is using that uh, predicate nominative slash predicate adjective. Uh, in this case, I'm trying to replace not weak in the blank. In order to do that, I, I see my linking verb erat. Linking verbs link two nominatives together. So I have to look at the nominative libertus to decide what the case, number, and gender of the adjective is. Libertus is nominative singular and masculine. So I chose infirmus, which is also nominative singular and masculine. That's why I chose that one. Uh, here are two more that I want you to try. Um, these should be a little bit easier if you're paying attention. Um, so figure out what answer you want. Hit pause, figure out the answer, and then I'll give you the answer. Sorry, I messed that up. The translation is the shops, not the shop. Um, so I'll give you a little bit more time here. Hit pause and try to answer again. This is determining uh, what case each one of these prepositional phrases uses. Prope uses the ablative. That's why I chose to burn us. Um, to burn I and to burn on, you have a, either a dative or a nominative for to burn I. You have an accusative for to burn on. Prope uses the ablative, so I'm going to use to burn us because that is is an ablative plural ending. For number five, per takes the accusative. Um, Agram could be accusative, so I need to look at the word the fields. Fields is plural, so I need a plural accusative, and that's why I chose be agros. Agros is, of course, the uh, ablative plural. So that's the kind of fill in the blanks that you're going to have on your test. There are several of them, like 10 or 15. So make sure that you know what prepositions take what case, as we've had in the last three tests, and, and make sure that you know how to use the dative and the accusative and the nominative uh, appropriately within a sentence. Uh, next, you're going to know, uh, you're going to have to know what the appearance of each type of glass is, the millefori, the core form, the ribbon glass, and the blown glass. Now, they're going to give you a picture of each one of these, and you're going to have to decide what that is a picture of. So you're going to get a picture like this, and you're going to have to decide based off of this which one is which. So uh, here you have ribbon glass in the first one. Um, and the one below that, you have the millefori, literally a thousand flowers. There's a bunch of flowers on that one. Hopefully, uh, you won't miss that one. Uh, core form is C, uh, and then blown glass is D. Of course, the most complex one being the blown glass. Uh, next, we have the cultural questions. Uh, what was the expense for each kind of glass making? Well, it was very expensive. That's really all you need to know. It wasn't cheap to make these. That's why it was such a popular thing. Uh, in the ancient world have Alexandrian glass. Where and when did glass uh, blowing begin? Uh, glass blowing was way before Alexandria was founded. Um, it, it began in 1500 BC. Make sure that you know that one. Uh, and it began in Egypt. 
what part did glass play in Alexandrian economy? Uh, well, it was the most successful industry in Alexandria. That's what it was famous for. From what is Alexandrian glass made? Uh, it was made from sand. It was made from plant ash or natron. Uh, and it was also made with lime. How did glass making evolve through the sequence of uh, the processes? Um, well, it went from glazing pottery through formation around a core, that, that, that core formed glass, and, and then eventually went into the uh, glass blowing phase. Why was Alexandria's land so fertile? So this is away from the glass and more about Alexandria. It was fertile because the Nile flooded it every single year, and all of that nutrients that was inland would come and flood right there at the delta in Alexandria. What was grown in Alexandria? Primarily, they grew wheat. Um, who ruled the city before the Romans showed up? The Greeks did. The Greeks ruled the city. I think you see some of that with uh, Uticus's story. The Greeks were in charge. How did the economy treat the lower class very poorly? Before the Greeks showed up, the pharaohs treated the lower class like their own personal property. Uh, when the Greeks showed up, they treated them the same way. Um, they just weren't treated very well at all. Uh, how did the Romans treat the lower class peasants? Just like the Romans did in most of the societies that they took over, they didn't really try to change anything. They wanted to kind of keep that status quo. So. They didn't treat. They didn't try to improve the way that the lower class was uh, being treated. They basically just wanted um, to make sure that Alexandria was paying their taxes and and helping out the the empire. What caused the environment for bribery to take place? Well, there were certain ways to get tax breaks, and the people who decided that were, of course, the Romans. So, if you owned a business and you were wealthy and you wanted some of those tax breaks. Um, the guy who was collecting taxes just kind of shoved him a couple of dollars. Uh, who controlled Alexandria when Romans took over? It was a very important city, so the emperor himself um, would, uh, would, would make sure that Alexandria was running property. Who used mummification in Egypt? Obviously the Egyptians did, but just like the Romans in normal situations when they took over, they would also ad adopt some of the um, local traditions, including mummification. So Romans weren't beyond mummifying uh, other Romans. Uh, for those of you that feel comfortable, you can stop here. This is pretty much um, the short version. I'm going to go through some more stuff if you want to watch uh, to help some of you guys that are struggling a little bit. First, let's start off, starting off with types of adjectives, especially those irregulars. Bonus, major, maximus, malus, peor, and pessimus, lightus, lightuor, and lightissimus. Um, bonus is a positive, major is a comparative, maximus is a superlative. Malus is a positive, peor is a comparative, and pessimus is a superlative. Litus is a positive, litior is a comparative, and litissimus uh, is a superlative. Um, you can see that maximus doesn't really have the double S, double L, double R that superlatives are supposed to have, but the pessimus and the litissimus do. Um, Maior has the IOR, so does peor, and so does litior. That IOR makes it a comparative. Uh, and then the usa'um, bonusa'um, litusa'um, and malusa'um, um, those are the positive forms. You're also going to have to know how to, to determine the tense of a verb. So remember we talked about this, does it have a marker, yes or no? Does it have a clue, yes or no, and how to translate that? And number one, we have solabot. Does it have a marker? Yes. B-A is a marker. Does it have a clue? No, it doesn't have an S, it doesn't have a U, a V, an X, or a Macron, so that does not have a clue. If it has a marker and it does not have a clue, it is imperfect tense, and we translate that as was or were. Uh, the next one, Salutawit, does it have a marker? No, there is no BA there, there is no ERA there, those are our two markers. Does it have a clue? Yes, it has a V. If it does not have a marker and it does have a clue, it is perfect tra perfect tense, and we translate it as ED, greeted. Uh, next one, suit, does it have a marker? No. Does it have a clue? No. So it is present tense, and we translate that as they are. Next one, we have pursue run. Does it have a marker? No. ERU is not a marker. It looks like it could be, but it's not. Um, it doesn't have ERA. Does it have a clue? Yes, it does have the U, so this is perfect tense. Even though it may look pluperfect to you, it is perfect. There is no marker. So I translate that as perfect. They put. The last one we have, does it have a marker? Yes, ERA is one of our markers. Does it have a clue? Yes, V. 
So if it has a marker and it has a clue, it's going to be the pluperfect tense, and we translate that as had. So they had prepared. Conjugations. You're going to have to look at a word like decora or sapilere, or sapilere, whatever, sapilere and amare. You're going to have to look at those and decide what conjugation it belongs to. Decora, no macron over the E, has to be third conjugation. Sapilere, sapilere, ah, sapilere uh, is I-R-E, so it is fourth conjugation. Amare, A-R-E, so it is first conjugation. Subjects of verbs is important to be able to translate a sentence, to be able to find that nominative, to be able to find whatever word uh, belongs to the ending. Here we have four. We have an ending with a T, we have an ending with a moose, we have an ending with an S, and we have an ending with a isti. It's important for us to be able to look at those endings and decide what the subject should be. Here are the singular endings for verbs, O and M, S and isti, and T. The pronoun that I would use for O or M is ego. So if I had sum, I would use ego, sum, and the ego would be understood, or I could use it. The S and the isti, S if it is in the present system, isti if it is perfect tense, the pronoun I would use would be to. So if I had amas, I could either use to amas, or I could make the to understood. If it ends in T, then the pronoun I would use would be ace, ea, or id. These are the personal pronouns, he, she, and it. The plural endings, the moose, for the moose I would use nos, that is we. For the tis or the istis, if it's perfect, we would use wos, which is you all, you plural. For the nt, the pronoun I would use would be a, ai, or ea. These are the plural forms of he, she, and it, and that we would translate them as they. Okay, make sure that we know the four stories in the book, the Taberna, the Inoficina uh, Utucci, the Clemens Tabernius, and the Pro Taberna Clementis. Make sure you remember what happened in those stories. If it were me, I would go back and spend the 10 or 15 minutes that it took me uh, to retranslate those if I really wanted a good grade on this test. Uh, number one, Taberna, that's when Quintus buys a shop. And remember, it has a history. It tells us about the old man. It's you know, that died from somebody beating him up. Uh, in Oficina Utucci, that's when the shop is destroyed. Um, when Clemens, after Clemens, you know, built it or whatever, Clemens meets Utucus, uh, who tries to extort money from him um, for protection, protection money. Uh, the next one, Clemens Tabernus, Clemens fixes up his shop after it's been destroyed. Uh, other around him help because he's a nice dude. Utucus uh, orders his thugs to attack Clemens at the end of it uh, and to destroy his shop. So they do. Um, in Pro Taberna Clementis, the thugs need to destroy the shop, and they threaten Clements. Clements relies on the gods. He says the gods are going to save me. The cat comes out of the temple, jumps in his arm, and scares the thugs because they see it as a sign from the gods. The cat then attacks Uticus, and Clements is now the new leader uh, of the street. So go back and look at those stories and make sure that you know what happened in those stories. That will help you two things. It will help you with questions about the stories, and it will especially help you uh, identifying those characters. Uh, for those of you that are still hanging around, I said I wouldn't do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, I'm going to look at this Latin vocab, and I want to go over what the word means and what declension it belongs to. Ephegius is fifth declension, and it's like an effigy or uh, a form of something. Uh, Flores is second declension. It is flower. Soxum is second declension. Animus is second declension. Soxum is a rock. Animus is spirit, so second declension. Augmens, augmentus is third declension. That's a line or row uh, procession. Uh, tumultus is fourth declension. That's an uproar. Uh, Nox, noctus is third. Impetus uh, is fourth declension. Litus, litoris is third declension. Uh, it means shore. Portus is uh, e masculine, so it's a port. It is second declension. Negotium is business. That is second declension. Autophicium is a building, that is second declension. Iter is uh, a journey, that is a third declension. Iter tenoris. Uh, Ala is first declension. Donum is gift second declension. Faber, uh, that, that you have to be careful with. Faber is one of those R ending second declension words. So it's Faber, Fabri. Um, that's why we're going to get Fabros, Fab, Fabrum, etc. That is a second declension word. Vita is uh, first declension. Life. I have eat there on there again. I don't know why. Race is a fifth declension word. Uh, manus is fourth declension. And auxilium is second declension neuter. 
Uh, Liber is, uh, again, an R ending second declension. Nanta is a first declension. Make sure you remember that Nanta is an occupation, so it's masculine. Agricola, same thing. It's an occupation, first declension, masculine. Uh, ostendo. Uh, okay, ostendo. Not sure why I put it on there, but it is ostendo. Ostendera, it is a third conjugation, meaning show. Ola is I feminine. It's base. It is first declension. Petra, make sure we know that is third conjugation to seek out. Uh, which Arius should have an I there, it doesn't, but that is a first to, or second declension word, us E, meaning glassmakers, the ace is fifth declension day, uh, postulare is a first to, first conjugation to, uh, to demand, fugara is uh, to flee, that is third uh, conjugation, adwenera is to uh, arrive, that is fourth conjugation, the IRE makes it fourth, ARE for invitare, to invite, first conjugation, discetera, um, no long mark over the ERE, that makes it third to depart. Consistera is to contain, that is ERE third. Um, no macron, so uh, it's third, and labentor is freely. So, told you guys I want to do that, so if you hung out for the whole, entire 26 minutes, well, you got a little bonus there. Uh, good luck, and one more. Okay, for those of you that hung out long enough, here is your bonus question. Stealing home base, career stealing home base records, Ty Cobb stole base, stole home 54 times. Number two in the NL was Max Carey with 33. That's pretty impressive. Um, he did it eight times in a season. Actually, did it several times, um, eight times in a season, but stole base, uh, home base eight times in a single season. So as the pitcher was winding up, he would just take off from third base and slide in and Get under the tack 54 times. Uh, the rest of this stuff, I uh, hope you guys um, are okay with. If not, text me, and we will or show up early in the morning, and we will try to fix whatever uh, you're worried about. Yeah. Uh,